Wanda Matthews is a member of Clemson's Food Safety and Nutrition Team, and she's based in Greenwood. And she's coming to us with a new idea, but it used to be something people did a lot, didn't they? Oh, gosh. This technique for preserving food is centuries old. And since we've had that resurgence of grow your own, yes. eat your own, we're seeing folks doing all kinds of food preservation. Freezing and canning are extremely popular, but number three with a bullet is going to be dehydration. And it's really really an easy, straightforward, uh, and safe way to make the end of your garden and the beginning, right now, the end of your garden and those fall fruits just last and last and last. Well, let's find out exactly how to do it. You going to yeah. start with the apples? We can do that. So um, there's no, wait, Well, first of all, let's talk about these gizmos. We can do that. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of different types of dehydrators out there, and it all depends on how much food you're interested in drying. An entry-level dehydrator right here is probably going to have the fan at the top or perhaps at the bottom, and it'll so circulate the fan, the fan vertically integral part of it. It is. Okay. Uh, heat and flowing air right. removes moisture, which prohibits microbes from growing, oh. makes our food safe to eat and longer uh, on the shelf. So a dehydrator involves a heater, a heating element, and a fan. That is correct. All right. So, so this is a simple one. This is. It's got a fan on the top. If you just, this will do a couple of pounds of food. If oh. you want to do pounds and pounds oh. of food, you want to move up to a little bit larger model. This will do several pounds of food at one time. Now, the oldest version of drying food of all time is probably going to be just lay it out and let Mother Nature uh -huh. do her job. A little breeze, a little sunshine, uh -huh. and there's plenty of folks that still dry their apples outside on those screens the way Grandma used to do. That's Right. Just delicious. But we're going to do it a little we more are. modern today. We are. So we're going to take a look at how do you actually so prepare this is, fruits. So this is a porous screen here. That is right. And this okay. is removable. You oh, can see it's oh, perforated. So you can clean. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Well, Easy neat. to use. So what we've got here is just some apple slices yes. sliced in uniform thickness and we're going to lay them out on the screen. And you screen. didn't even bother to cut the middle out. I didn't. A little you bit more whack, fiber. Whack, whack. That's right. And you've got the peel on. That's right. A little more fiber, yeah. a few more antioxidants. Uh -huh. So leave it all, that all that good nutrition right. in there. Then you just lay them out in a now single what, layer. Now you had them in water. What was in that I water? I did. Now in that water is a little fruit fresh or if you don't have fruit fresh handy you can just crush up vitamin C tablets and put them in the water and that will treat uh, the apples and prevent them from darkening. So um, oh, just like we put lemon juice on peaches and things like exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. And you can use lemon juice right. here. So we've got these. But you don't not have to do that if you, I mean, if you didn't have any of that. You can Absolutely just not. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you're going to wind up adding brown sugar to these later when you cook them, yes. they're going to look dark anyway. So you can totally <laughs> skip well, this there you step. Go. All right. That's right. So all we do at this point is slide it in there. We put our lid on and we turn it on and in about give or take, six or eight hours, you're going to have dried apples. Really? And once so it's not like overnight or days or anything? I put them, I load this before I go to bed at night, uh -huh. 10, 30, 11 o'clock. When I get up at six the next morning, ready to go. So here's what they look like wow. once they're dried. Okay. Easy peasy. Now, mm -hmm. they'll, you'll know they're dried because they'll bend mm -hmm. very easily. They'll have a leather-like yes, consistency, uh -huh. and that's it. They're okay. ready to go. Now, does it use a whole lot of electricity? Almost none. It's no more than, uh, say, uh, your blender or your microwave. Really? So mm -hmm. it's not like you go run the power bill Standard up? Standard like 110-volt outlet. So, okay. Um, so if you're, I've got some different things in here to show you. There's lots of different types of food you can dehydrate. Pears. Now somebody just let me stand in his, Hank Stallworth let me stand in the bucket on his front end loader and put me up in the air and I've got those old fashioned pears. I bet I could do that with those. Those I? are probably the key for variety. It is. They're yeah. excellent for canning, really? but you can uh -huh. also, they're actually the preferred variety for canning, but you can also dehydrate okay. them. Okay. Yes. And this is, I just cut these into rounds. Uh -huh. e easy as it gets. I didn't even treat you didn't these even to keep them from darkening. But you know, I think they look pretty. I don't think it's unattractive. These are fantastic for an on the go snack. I mean, the all the flavor that you want of a fresh pear is there, but I mean, there's it's just no weight there. It? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Apples with a little cinnamon oh, sprinkled on them. Oh, that looked pretty. Just like eating apple uh -huh. pie. Okay. Yummy. 
Next tray. <gasps> Look at that. Those tomatoes that are still struggling at the yeah, end of the it year. Feels, Absolutely. Like, uh -huh. It's very much like leather. It's it's that's but the consistency now, you go for. I, to me, when I make pizza, I like to use fresh tomatoes, but I feel like sometimes they're kind of goosely. How would you treat that to use those on a pizza? Uh, you could easily put that on as is and make sure they're nestled down in the sauce and oh, they will be very they good. Would just, they would rehydrate that's slightly right. from that sauce. That's right. Another way to do this is um, you can drizzle or cover them in uh, olive oil and let Ooh. them rehydrate that way. Very they really good. Look so pretty. They, they are good. Last one is probably the most popular thing to dehydrate and that's make your own beef jerky. Uh huh. So okay. uh, all the hunters like that beef jerky. Because they can use um, deer and things like that. Oh absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the one of the common questions that we get is now that I've dehydrated it how do I store it? Yes. Is there anything special to do with it? Really not a big trick here since we've removed the moisture here, we want to prevent moisture from getting back to it and being reabsorbed during storage. Okay. So we're going to recommend a moisture vapor proof container. Freezer bag, not sandwich bag, freezer bag oh, excludes, the heavier, that's correct, the heavier one. Okay. will exclude the moisture just in the ambient air. Okay. So, And we recommend choosing the size that is appropriate for how much you're going to need for the recipe you intend to cook. Mm -hmm. If you've got a family of three or four, for heaven's sakes, okay, don't ahead. use a gallon bag. Use okay. a smaller okay. bag. That's right. right. Okay. And that way you use a bag So you at just a time. pop it in? That's it. Shall I just pour these That's in? That's all that it takes. Okay. Now, when you get ready to do fried apple pies, open that up. Or if I'm going somewhere, I can mix some trail, make and make my own trail mix using this can. You bet. Now, where do I put, where do I store this? This can go on the shelf or in a cool place in your home. At 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the fruits will last up to a year. Um, vegetables will last up to six months. If you're a little bit warmer than that in your house, about 80 degrees. Yes, my house is, yeah. is ambient because we don't cut, use air You get about yeah. half as much time, but the wonderful thing about dehydrated foods is they taste so good, they're so concentrated with their flavor, rarely do they last they very long. long. The family's constantly in them getting a, a snack. Well, what if I wanted to put it, could it is it safe to put it in the freezer? Or you can, and longer? that's very common, especially it takes for those just folks. Such a little bit of room. It's very small, and uh, a lot of folks do that. When they invest the, uh, if they pick the apple tree and they're they're dehydrating oh, all those mm -hmm. apples, very common for them to not take any chances, and they'll put those tightly packaged bags okay. into. Okay. Well, the it's freezer. such a space saver. You said that this might have been five pounds of tomatoes. That to start is with. correct, and people so really beautiful. take for granted how much our food is actually water but once you remove that water you've still got all the flavor but so you know space is a con is a consideration yes it this is. really might be better than the traditional canning it's certainly easier and less effort to now, go into it now if people want to get some Expert advice. Have mm -hmm. you got some books you recommend? Uh, we do. The two books that I brought, So Easy to Preserve and Putting Food By, are excellent. And they have plenty of science-based and research uh, information on drying and all types of food preservation. Of course, your first line of defense really does need to be to call your local extension mm -hmm. agent and tell, tell the person that answers, I want to talk to the food safety and nutrition person. We'll jump on the line and we'll be glad to offer you any kind of food preservation information. So that number that we tell people to call for gardening information also ha is the lot, same line you use for food information You as bet. Well. That Home and Garden Information Center, that 1-800 number, they've got a person there that's happy to talk with you about From food safety. That's or, right. Yeah, okay. But if you want that 24-hour access, gobs of those fact sheets available that you can click mm -hmm. on and there's the probably the primer, the beginner's version of how mm -hmm. to uh, how to dehydrate just foods. To get, to, just to figure out exactly how That's to get started. That's right. Wonderful. That's exactly right. Well, we're going to come back a little bit later and find out websites and things yeah. like that because um, I think people are going to want to do this. And um, I think, you know, you could go to the market now and find some of these late end of the season things. You're right. It'd be a perfect time to get Bargain started. Bargain time at the farmer's market. And if you rehydrate that with some beef broth or some uh, bottled tomato juice. Great. Kapow Thanks. with the flavor. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Yes, we'll talk to you again later. All right, and now we're going to go back to Teresa and hear a little bit more from the chat room.